Managing Director of K2 Promotions, Tom Loeffler. Now, Tom, Gennady Golovkin's 23 straight knockouts came to a complete halt against Daniel Jacobs. Does that take away the mystique and aura from Golovkin? Because that's one of the selling points, the 23 straight knockouts. You guys are looking to make 24. His, his knockout streak came to a halt, yeah. but he still knocked down Danny. You know, exactly we have a lot my of point. Respect, uh, we have a lot of respect for Danny. I think he really rose to the occasion. He put on a tremendous fight. Um, you know, a lot of fighters get intimidated when you're on the big stage, Madison Square Garden, HBO pay-per-view, you know, shown in, uh, in over 100 countries. A lot of fighters uh, freeze up under those circumstances. Danny really rose to the occasion. We always knew, you know, throughout the whole press tour, I was telling, I was trying to explain to people, this is really going to be a nice, toughest fight. It's clearly the, the two top middleweights fighting each other. In fact, a lot of a lot of champions would have tried to swerve around Danny mm -hmm. Jacobs, you know, as as a mandatory challenger. Gennady. Uh, he fights all of his mandatory obligations as a, as a unified champion. He, he follows all the rules of the sanctioning bodies, and it's not that easy when you have you know all the different titles and the belts that he has. You know, it's a lot uh, to to go through, and and um, you know it, it was a great matchup, uh, tremendous fight that night. Um, you know, I'm biased, but I think uh, Gennady clearly won the fight, especially right. with the knockdown, especially pressing the action. Uh, but again, you can't take anything away from uh, Danny's performance because to belittle Gennady, uh, it takes away from Danny's performance, and you can't do that. I think they both uh, showed you know the level of talent that they're at. And uh, you know, when I was talking to Al. I said like when you have the the two best guys in the division fighting each other, nine times out of ten, it doesn't end in a knockout because mm -hmm. their talent level exactly is so evenly matched. Now, is it a bit of a curse when Gennady possesses that type of knockout power, that boxing IQ? Because the expectations become a little too high among fight fans. They oh. expect to see another knockout. And like you mentioned before, he's fighting the number two guy in the division, Daniel Jacobs. The guy definitely had the boxing skills, not to only to survive, but to box. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a knock on the guy. The curse is uh, my negotiating with other fighters, promoters. <laughs> when when uh, Gennady was knocking everybody out, they, they were making it sound like it's their uh, the last fight. They exactly. wanted to have like retirement money to get in the ring with Gennady, <laughs> and and that's why you know some of these other fights you know, just weren't able to be made. But um, Gennady. Danny was the mandatory. You know, I was able to work out the deal with Al Heyman. We avoided the purse bid, and people were saying there's no way we could make it. You know, work out the deal with each other, and uh, we made it happen. And it turned out to be a, a fantastic night uh, for the boxing fans. Now, I know there's a lot of talks about going to Kazakhstan and defending his titles and fighting for the WBO middleweight title with BJ Saunders. Is that fight going to happen? And if so. Oscar's comment saying that this fight shouldn't be taking place because they're talking about a fight in September with Canelo, but there's nothing in, in writing. Yeah, we, we don't have a, a signed deal with uh, Golden Boy, unfortunately, for, for a Canelo fight. It's hard to, you know, base Gennady's career on, on a fight that uh, hasn't even been, uh, been agreed to yet. At the same time, if there's a way we can uh, make it happen, then we'll certainly uh, try to uh, put that fight together. Uh, it's always been a nice dream to unify with uh, you know all the other champions. Billy Joe Saunders has the the one title that Gennady's missing. We tried to do that fight last year, and uh, we weren't able to put it together. But you know, hopefully, uh, if we can make the Canelo fight, if we can make the Saunders fight, I think that's uh, that's uh, those are two great fights uh, for Gennady that are that are out there. And it's not an easy task for uh, Canelo versus Chavez Jr. Chavez Jr. is going to come in really heavy. What are your thoughts on that fight? <laughs> I think uh, Chavez Jr. Is, is a bigger guy than Canelo. I think uh, he's very motivated for that fight. I think uh, even though they brought the weight limit down, uh, I, I've never really seen a half pound <laughs> on a fight like that, 164 and a half, but I guess that's what they agreed to. Right. Uh, I mean, I guess you're really splitting hairs at that point, but uh, you know, I mean, that was one of the criticisms Canelo's gotten over the last couple of years. Is it's always been some strange weight limit, 155 or 159 or whatever it was, 157. Um, then, uh, you know, what, what the actual uh, uh, middleweight limit was. But, uh, you know, now he's actually fighting heavier than, than where, where Golovkin fights. So hopefully, uh, you know, that fight, uh, if he's successful, if Canelo's successful against Chavez, uh, hopefully that fight uh, can be made. Uh, you know, and, and I'm in still in regular contact with Eric Gomez. And, and as I mentioned, if there's, uh, you know, whatever we can do on our side to try to make that fight happen, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. 
Let's talk about the fighter. The reason why we're here, Alexander Juzic is going to be fighting on April 9th, or April 8th, excuse me. Now, one of the two, or at least one of the greatest uh, cruiserweights in the world at one time was Evander Holyfield. Uh, James Tony was another good cruiserweight, had a short-term stay at that division. Is Juzic looking to become one of the greatest cruiserweights in boxing today? Absolutely. I mean, when you mentioned James Tony, when he had that uh, great uh, victory over uh, uh, Zhirov, I mean, that was one Back of the Back in 2003? Classic classic fights and I think uh, in fact that fight stands out in my mind because I think that was one of the, that was the last cruiserweight fight on uh, premium cable TV here in the United States um, and uh, but uh, Usyk really has all the tools he, he has a tremendous amateur career he won the Olympic gold medal um, he broke Evander's, whole, uh, Evander's record of uh, winning a, a world championship in the least amount of fights yeah. um, he went to, look, he went to Poland to fight Milwaukee, who was at that time, he, you know, he knocked out Marco Hook. He was considered the number one cruiserweight in the world. So it's very rare to have a guy with so little fights um, take on such a, a, a dangerous fight, especially in, uh, you can imagine the atmosphere in Poland. You know, that's mm -hmm. their hero over there with Milwaukee uh, and, um, and Usyk going over there and, and, and taking the title away from him. So that's a, that's a huge victory for him. You know, talk to us about the talent that Yuzik has, because a lot of fight fans were not too pleased with the uh, first HBO appearance. They said that he started a little late, started a little slow. I see a lot of talent. I'm excited about the guy. Tell the fight fans why they should tune in on April 8th, because uh, I think he's a tremendous talent. Look, uh, Usyk's a tremendous talent, but he has a great matchup against Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter is uh, a young guy that's undefeated. Also was a U.S. Uh, he went to the Olympics in London uh, representing the U.S. team. And uh, it's very rare, it's a treat for the fans really to get uh, a matchup with these two undefeated young guys, uh, you know, so early in their, so early in their career. So uh, it's, it's a great matchup. It's on a tremendous show with Lomachenko and Gavorstik, um, you know, three uh, top talented uh, Ukrainian fighters. Um, you know, this triple header uh, from HBO probably has, is one of the most uh, talented, talent rich, I should say, cards that uh, we've seen in a long time and uh, and uh, you know Machuno had a very difficult style for uh, for uh, any fighter but uh, for Alexander his first time here in the United States uh, Machuno was a southpaw he was very fast he would move around a lot and for for Usyk to still get the, the the TKO victory that he did I mean that that's an impressive uh, statement I think uh, he should shine uh, Michael Hunter has a more classic uh, style and uh, should be more conducive to, you know, exposing some more of uh, Usyk's skills. Certainly his personality, you know, right. the, the way he uh, shines in front of the camera. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're really looking forward to, to that matchup. One of my last questions, can you talk to us about AJ versus Klitschko? That fight's going to be in April. It's going to be a huge event, 90,000 plus fans that's in the a, UK. Yeah, that's a, that's when you talk about big fights, that's a, that's <laughs> that's a, a, big that's, fight. that's a massive fight, yeah, especially uh, Wembley Stadium, you know, you got two two heavyweights, almost identical size, identical uh, structure, uh, identical weight, and they're always in shape. You know, I went to a, a couple of uh, Anthony's uh, fights uh, over in London. And it's a great atmosphere for him over there, and uh, Vladimir sells out soccer stadiums. And when you got those two forces together, selling out 90,000 seats at Wembley Stadium, it breaks the record for boxing in the UK. And and uh, UK is such a tremendous market right now for boxing, uh, so many uh, talented fighters, and uh, that fight's really uh, a top-level fight. Thank you, Tom, always a pleasure. All right, Dominic. Thank you.